George Mitchell had a very good result in his mediation between the nationalists and the unionists in Northern Ireland. So what did you learn from him in the case study? Discuss with your partner. <laughs> what did you learn from George Mitchell? some area of common ground, right? So that got people working together a little bit. So do you understand common ground? We're on the same ground. This we think the same about this. So if we can find some area where people think the same way, they feel friendlier or nicer to each other. We think the same about this, right? Maybe we can talk about that now. Okay? What soccer team do you like? I like soccer. What do you like? Ballet? <laughs> <laughs> Who's your favorite ba ballet? <laughs> what do you like? Computer game. What's your favorite computer game? World of Warcraft. Oh, I play World of Warcraft too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Do you feel friendlier with me? <laughs> hmm? Can we make better negotiation now? Because we both play World of Warcraft. We have common ground. <laughs> yes, we have some common ground. Do you feel happier with me? A little bit. Yes, it's a lie. I never played before. Huh? Sorry. I know. Okay. So if you can find some common ground between the people, they can feel better with each other. Okay, anything else? They got, got a good result, peace, so he was good at persuading, he was persuasive. So he had to persuade some people who were very opposed, like the British government policy. A lot of countries have the policy not to negotiate with terrorists, because they don't want to, to encourage more terrorists in the future. If we negotiate with these terrorists, maybe somebody else will decide to be terrorists and then they can get some negotiation and agreement, right? So they usually decide not to negotiate. But I guess George Mitchell persuaded them that in Ireland this is a very specific situation, so there's not going to be any more terrorism, and they're, go they're going to give up their arms, right? We can trust them to give up their weapons, that kind of thing. So we also missed one, the process. Okay, he changed the process. We talked about this in the, in the treaty negotiation. Sometimes we need to step back from the negotiation. Okay? A little bit different than the win-win. If we were studying about just win-win negotiation, we don't really think about that, right? We think about just matching the interests. But we're studying uh, the book. In the book, treaty negotiation, they say outside the negotiation is very important too. Okay? So he changed the process, made an agenda. Okay. So he changed the process from everybody together to small subgroups. And a topic for each subgroup that the subgroup talks about specifically. Then we can make the negotiation. So this is commonly used in international organizations. If you go to the UN, there are so many countries in the UN, right? So we need to make a policy about something. Even in the EU, there are so many countries in the EU. Ireland has one idea, Portugal has another idea, Spain has another idea. If we have everybody sitting around the table, negotiating, it's not easy. So what they often do in Europe is they make small subgroups. Ireland and Sweden have a similar idea, right? So Ireland, Sweden and Portugal negotiate and make an idea. And then another subgroup negotiates, make the idea together. And then the subgroups can come together and negotiate with each other. So we can change the process in the negotiation. Okay, and this is facilitative, helping the other group to explain and explore each other's ideas and opinions. Okay. So if we're going to study about a successful mediation, this is an example. Okay. If we look at some other problems with terrorism like Israel and Palestine, they still haven't made a compromise. So they tried to study about Northern Ireland. What did they do in Nor What did George Mitchell do in Northern Ireland, right? Uh, so other, other conflicts like this is not easy to solve because people's feeling is very strong okay, about the other side. So these days, people involved in this agreement, they often visit the other countries to try to help them too with making that kind of agreement. Nowadays, the relationship between the UK and Ireland is the best it has been for thousands of years, right? The Queen visited Ireland for the first time before she wasn't welcome in Ireland, right? But she visited... Imagine the Queen lived in the UK and she's very rich, but she could never go to Ireland. So maybe she was very curious. She's about 80 years old. Maybe she was very curious about what Ireland is like. So she finally visited Ireland just two years ago takes time, right? Before she was worried because of the terrorists, she didn't want to come to Ireland. Her cousin was killed in a terrorist attack in Ireland. He used to go on holidays in Ireland fishing, and the terrorist group put the bomb on his boat, so he killed the Queen's cousin. So you can imagine the Queen wasn't very happy with Ireland. Even her own cousin, Lord Mountbatten, was uh, killed by the terrorists. 
So, uh, do you have any other comment about this mediation? No? Okay, so then you're going to be a mediator. Do you think you can do a good job like George Mitchell? No? So, let's make some groups. So we have three, three, and four. So we have to make this desk like mediation. So the three people make a desk like the mediation, like you saw with the lady. You have one person in the middle and two people on each side. Okay? So you can move you can move over there. You can move the desk more easily over there, right? There's more space. Okay? So stand up and go and make a place for yourself. So who's, you're going to be the mediator. You're in the middle. You're the mediator. Why don't you sit over there? It's easier. Move the desk. Here is the desk with this up. Two mediators. You see why it can be the mediator, right? And then you're sitting opposite each other. Questions. So we have four question types which are helpful. Most one is an open-ended question. Open-ended question means the person has to talk a lot. Okay, how do you feel about it? What do you think about it? If you look down here, we have some examples of questions. Open question. First one. What has this conflict done to your relationship? Open question. They have to talk. Okay, and explain. A closed-ended question is just like yes or no question. That we don't use very much. We can see close question here. Uh, you all need to agree here. If this conflict were a thing, what would it be? So they have to like one word answer. What is the conflict? In this case, they said pariah. Pariah is a fish which eats other fish. Okay. Uh, then we have. Uh, the third question type is a leading question. It's used when the mediator wants a party to verify what is true or obvious. E.g., you do want to make things better in the family, don't you? Okay. Do you understand leading question? So I tell you, you want to improve things, don't you? It usually finishes with don't you. Okay. Do you want to improve things? Do you want to make things better? Okay. Do you want to have a better relationship with the other person or not? Right? And then I finish with, instead of asking, do you want to have a better relationship, which is just yes or no, close question, I ask, you want to have a better relationship, don't you? That's a leading question. I say, don't you? Okay, and the most valuable one we talked about is the probing question. How so? Or why? Or tell me more. Can you, can you explain more? Can you be more specific? That's a probing question. Then let's read about the case study. So, um, <coughs> Kim Soo B, can you read the case study out loud? Yeah. 
this all of her sisters in law wearing her mother's pure earrings. Apparently, before entering the hospital, the father dispersed several family heirlooms, but not at all only to his sons, including his wife, Joey. Christine was upset because she wanted to inherit her mother's jewelry and felt it wasn't right that it could to her sister's involved. She felt her father and brothers are somehow punishing her for not marrying. Arbonne believes it was important to tradition and respect his father's feelings. He wants to make sure that Jody stays in the family. Arbor and his wife So, do you have any question about the vocabulary here? Mm -hmm. Some new vocabulary about this kind of specific one. Do you understand inherit? Yes. What does inherit mean? Okay. What does will mean? W-I-L-L. Will we'll now, not verb now. Somebody's will. Ah. Before you die, you write a will. Yes. It says, I give my jewelry to my daughter. I give my house to my lover, right? I give my whatever to whoever. Okay? So uh, do you understand family heirlooms? Heirlooms, heirlooms, the H is not pronounced. Yes. What does fa what's a family heirloom? It's a family heirloom is something which has been in the family for a long time, maybe a hundred years. So wedding dress or jewelry. Okay? Do you have any family heirlooms? Hmm? No? In the U.S. it's popular to keep some women get married in their mother's wedding dress or their grandmother's wedding dress. They use their grandmother's wedding ring. It's a good way to save money. Right? You can uh, use your grandmother's wedding ring for getting married. Right? Guys, you don't have to buy an engagement ring. Just ask your grandmother for her engagement ring. No. <laughs> then you can say it's very special. Right? Uh, any more questions then? Hmm? How do you spell that? G-A-N-G-I uh, Ganging up. So her brothers are ganging up on her. It means that brothers are all on one side and she's on the other side. Okay, so they gave an example of the hospital and the hospice. In the Western society, people are more mean to their parents. They send them to the hospice. They don't look after them at home, right? Hospice is a, is a place uh, you, maybe you would call it a sil silver, silver home or something in Korea, right? Where old people live together. Mm -hmm. Maybe some nurse takes care of them. 
it's more comfortable than a hospital. Uh, so, do you understand the situation? What's the situation? What's the problem here? What's the issue? Yes, the inheritance of the mother's jewelry. And what's the problem? What's the issue? sons. Okay? And now the sister-in-law is wearing the jewellery and the daughter wants to take some legal action. Do you understand legal action? Yes. Okay. So uh, the father is very elderly and near near death. <coughs> so we don't know about the will yet, but just the father gave, dispersed some of these earnings, early, including the mother's jewelry. So Christine thinks it's not right that the sister-in-law should get the jewelry. She thinks the daughter should get the mother's jewelry. Okay. Uh, she didn't get married, so she feels she's being punished because she, her father is not happy she didn't get married. Kind of thing. Okay. So. Uh, down below we have some vocabulary which the mediator can use. Right? First you ask them to share their stories. After they share their stories you can say like this, thank you for sharing your stories. Right? This kind of line. Then these are kind of questions that you can ask them. Okay? So, uh, first of all, both, we're going to follow the mediation. Both people can make their opening statement. Okay. Then the mediator is going to talk to each of them privately. But the other person can stay at the de desk and listen, right? We're not going to make them go away. But the mediator can talk to the person privately. They can ask these questions, right? Similar questions to both people. Okay, so there's a list of a lot of questions here. You don't have to ask all of them. You can ask your own questions or you can ask <coughs> some of these questions. Okay. So, how much time do you need to prepare? Maybe 10 minutes. So let's take 7 minutes to prepare. Okay, so the mediator, you can prepare, think about what questions you're going to ask. Okay? The, per the people decide who you are and your opening statement. Okay? Try to prepare an opening statement. So, you have to decide one person is going to be Albert, the oldest child. His wife is wearing the earrings. Okay? So Albert disapprove of Christine's lifestyle. They want Christine to get married. Okay? So decide who wants to be Albert and who wants to be Christine. And then Albert and Christine can prepare their opening statements. Okay? So take about seven minutes to do that. Okay. So who is Albert and who is Christine? Who is 
Okay, so prepare some arguments. You can embed some information if you want, but it's not like it's a role play, so you can embed some information. It's not too exaggerated in a way. You can read all the questions. Decide which is good questions. Think about your active listening. So here is Albert and here is Christine. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to prepare your opening statements. So you can invent some information if you want, okay? But not too exaggerated information, okay? You guys are mediators, so look through the questions, read them, try to understand them. Choose the question that you want to ask together, okay? You can write some other questions if you want to okay? So just to explain the structure, the opening statement will be about 30 seconds to 1 minute, like we saw in the video. Your opening statement is just 30 seconds to 1 minute, okay? Then the mediator will ask questions to each person privately. That will take 2 or 3 minutes. So mediator, how many questions can you ask in 2 or 3 minutes? Maybe 4 questions or 5 questions, right? Ask to each side. Then the mediator is going to make a creative solution and propose, and hopefully we can have an agreement. Okay? Does everybody understand? Do you have any question about the structure? So just prepare an opening statement of 30 seconds to one minute, just explaining your position. Okay? And you choose about four or five questions you can make. It doesn't have to be these questions, you can make other questions that you're going to ask them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay? It should cause you automatically. 
or think about some other reasons why, why you should get the jewellery. You can invent some other reason, right? You had some very special relationship with your mother, something like that, okay? This is a role play, so it means you can invent some information. Okay? You need to invent some information. She wanted him to go to the hospice. Well, her brothers wanted him to go to the hospital. Maybe the hospital was cheaper, right? So the brothers, uh, it seems that the brothers is against her. Every time, every decision, she brothers is against her. That's not important. That's just an example that the brothers are against her. You need more time or are you finished? I think we have more time. How much more time? Two more minutes? I think we started three and ten minutes. We started three and ten minutes. We want to start. Okay, then take two more minutes to prepare. <clears throat> solution. Okay, so the time is up. So we're going to take 10 minutes for the mediation. So just, you could be watching the time, the opening statement, we should be finished by two minutes, finish the opening statements, right? Before two minutes is finished. Then, the mediator, you're not going to spend too much time with just one person, so watch the time. Then two to five minutes, four or five minutes talking to one person, right? Then four or five minutes to seven or eight minutes. The mediator can see the clock talking to the other person. And then eight minutes to ten minutes proposing the solution. Okay, so let's start. Okay. We'll start with the opening session. Don't 
forget to take notes. Mediators don't forget to take notes, right? Your story, your own story. My mother's show. We will help you. Wedding. Together, then later you can introduce separately, okay? You guys have two mediators, so you can save time, right? So you can interview her and you can interview her, but at the start to opening statements, everybody listens. You understand statements? You make a statement. She doesn't interrupt, okay? Do you mind if ask him? Albert. Do you mind Albert, do you mind if I speak with Christine privately? So say that. <laughs> if I interview Christine privately. Uh, Uh, she's very 
very selfish uh, she don't understand she only to say I have to get mother's dream so our relationship is very bad
Are you happy with that or are you done with sex? Sex? Is we're going to get married? <laughs> Okay, so then, uh, the time is finished today, so the next class we will discuss again about the results, the proposals, so try to remember your proposal, and we'll discuss about the proposal in the next class, in the mediation, and that's finished there for today.